Hi, welcome to this little mini-series on how to deal with black magic and black magicians. Um, I'm making this series because uh, I'm getting a little bit too old for this stuff, so I'm hoping to give people some handholds on how to help people who are affected by this. So, first off I want to start with um, the problem of identifying if something is indeed black magic or if there is something else going on. Well, the good news is that most people who think they are affected by black magic aren't. Um, because black magic is in a way often also an excuse. Uh, because many people's lives are not going very well, or they are not having luck in their job or financially or in love. And rather than look at themselves and their own patterns, they can then blame it on an ex or an other or a jealous colleague, rather than yeah, having to work on themselves and to take responsibility for um, their messed up lives. So this is the good news, but it is very hard to determine because often the person themselves will be very convinced that it is black magic or somebody else doing it to them. And often they will try to, in a way, pull other people into this uh, belief. Um, so often they will affect like other uh, energetic practitioners um, or family members to also believe in their yeah, idea of being persecuted by some dark forces. And that doesn't mean that those dark forces don't exist. Um, and often, in a way, by having such a belief, people expose themselves to it. So, for instance, I'm having problems at work, I'm not popular, I think my co colleague is envious of me and has cursed me, and I start researching it. I start reading books about it, I start visiting websites or even groups who deal with that type of thing, and then suddenly my, in a way, imaginate, um, yeah, curse or affliction suddenly turns into a real one because I'm in a way exposing myself to powers which can cause that for real. So often it can also be a self-fulfilling prophecy with people. So once you have determined whether it is indeed a self-inflicted problem or it is a problem coming from the outside, then you can try to focus what type of uh, black magic is going on. Um, one of the things I use to determine, to find out whether it is indeed a self-inflicted problem or indeed a black magic problem, is a sense of harmony of their spirit. Because the ego, of course, suffers. If something is frustrating it, or there is pain or danger or instability, then the ego will, of course, try to protect itself and will suffer from that condition. But the spirit does not. So it is very important to try to not just talk with the incarnated person and the ego which is talking through the incarnated person, but also to speak with the person's guides, with the person's higher self or spirit, to try to find out what it makes out of the situation. Uh, because a very challenging situation may in a way force the person to abandon their job or abandon their partner which is in a way just a shift in direction which is necessary for the spirit to be able to continue its path. So I always allow the spirits of the person, the spirit guides or their own higher self to be the judge of whether it is indeed uh, black magic in such a sense that it is really derailing the person's life and an intervention is necessary or if it is just yeah, a problem for the ego because it cannot see the spiritual realm very well or what lies beyond it or the purpose of uh, something which is uncomfortable. Um, to talk with the higher self or uh, with the spirits I would suggest you um, use some methods uh, like ideally uh, channeling but without channeling you can use muscle tests for instance or tarot cards or some other uh, method of divination to try to find out yeah, where actually the situation is headed and whether it's a wrong or a good thing 
because even if somebody is in a bad situation it may actually have a good outcome um, if you don't do anything about it. So before intervention I think you should always um, yeah, do a proper prognosis to see um, where the situation is leading before going into it heavy-handed. So the next stage is to determine what type of black magic could be affecting the person. Um, one of the more uh, common types is actually that the person is bothered by a, a non-physical entity or spirit, you could say. Um, this can happen because the person lives in a place which has such a negative entity. Such a negative entity can also just attach itself uh, to a person because that person was just around. So I've um, had clients who visited uh, a concentration camp and then picked up a spirit which was very interested in, in pain and suffering and despair and because those spirits were drawn to the energy of that place and yeah if you go to such a place then such a spirit can potentially connect to you and um, join you and stay with you causing all kinds of problems. It's also possible that such a spirit is sent um, and yeah then it becomes more of a uh, form of an attack but we'll go more into spirits into the next video. Uh, the next most likely cause is that it is a curse. A uh, curse is in a way um, something which you do without your own volition. Um, so in a way you could say there is not a real difference between a curse and a blessing because there are things which happen to you uh, without you doing it themselves or consciously or actively doing it yourselves. Um, but well blessings are considered to be beneficial so things tend to happen to you which yeah, are beneficial or to your liking. Curses tend to be that certain things happen against your liking or against your intentions. Uh, curses are a lot more difficult to detect than um, spirits. Spirits can yeah, try to hide of course so it can be a, a little bit of a trick to find them uh, but the curse will uh, if it is created by a skilled person will look like the person's own energy and you have to look very carefully into the aura or the energy body to find out that they are not that person's own energy. And you can detect it because the curse doesn't really respond to the person's will. So if you ask the person to think different things or do different things or imagine different things the energy body tends to change but the part of the energy body which is the curse does not change. It is really set into a, a very specific pattern and this is how you can detect it by observing the energy body while you're asking the person to go through some changes and transformations and finding out okay certain things are not responding to the person's own volition, to the person's own spirit and that makes them at the very least suspect and possibly a curse. Uh, the third and most problematic um, group are when a person is actually being actively attacked by a magician. Uh, this magician of course can yeah, um, try to send uh, curses or spirits but it can also affect the person more directly. Uh, one of the big problems is also if there is a, a mage involved um, and you are interfering with that mage's activities then that mage will in a way try to defend their domain which means also their victim and you will end up in a conflict with that mage. So this is also a much more yeah, in-depth topic which I will talk about in the next uh, videos. So to be short, first to determine uh, if the person is really suffering from a curse, uh, second if they are suffering from a spirit a curse, a mage or a combination of those factors. And how to prepare for that uh, and how to deal with that I will go into into the coming videos.